Hey, nerds. Support Venture Forth over on our Patreon to unlock exclusive bonus content. Now, onto the show. Hi, I'm Flynn. Kellek. Oma. Shreya. And I'm your DM, Ethan. Welcome to Venture Forth. Previously, you all had begun your journey to the Dakir ruins, where Zeta, the tiefling, had instructed you all to go on your the next steps of your journey to discover uh, what this, this possible affliction that she was feeling was. You made your way back to the town of Marstock, where you heard news of, um, unfortunately, uh, Cold Crest and Beckinsdale being taken over by Kaldur, and now the entire northern border being moved forward of the war front. With hearing this news, you continued on to Westbury, where you all had taken the night to rest. And in the morning, you all had made your way over to Nestle Valley, through the mountain itself, to get to a mining town on the other side. You had taken this rail system all the way through the mountain with no incident. But when you got to the other side, Flynn had a mission of his own. Flynn had gone to the house of a Graham Bludron senior to deliver the unfortunate news that his son, who had joined the Iron Light Collective, was now dead. Graham seemed to have come to this conclusion a while ago on his own, as his son had not sent word back and specifically had not returned. But you all decided to, well, Flynn decided that you all would be taking up the mission in his stead. You all had gone down into the mine to see if you could find these drow who had supposedly been coming up and been confronting the miners who had been coming out of the mine in order to settle some sort of deal. You're not quite sure exactly what's going on, but you ventured into the mine in order to discover that for yourselves. As you went further and further down, Shreya had noticed a scream off in the distance as you descended into the the darkness below. You ended up coming to this cave that Shry had specifically pinpointed that the scream had come from, and after walking in, you had come across these six Nothics deep within the cave. They were devouring one of these miners that was in the cave, and as their massive bulging eyes looked up at you, they attacked. A brief encounter ensued, and you all stood victorious over these bodies. As you look down at all of them, the the six bodies that lay there on the ground, defeated, dead, as well as this dwarven body, what would you all like to do? I'd like to take a look at the dwarven body um, for two things. One, to confirm that he died from these creatures. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, and two, to see if there's any, like, uh, identification, any way I can, like, report his death to this organization or whatever. Definitely. Um, make a medicine check for me. Literally, this die, I thought that, I thought the thing would help me, but it didn't. The roller did not do anything. It's going out again. It's still a, I mean, it's a natural one, (laughs) but I have a plus eight to medicine check. Okay. (laughs) Um... (laughs) Uh, you know that this dwarf is dead and you know that it was these creatures that killed it as you're looking through it though there is as as when you guys came up you noticed the entire rib cage on the front is like broken outward and these Nothics were devouring the inside of this creature any sort of identification is just covered in the mutilation of this dwarf (sighs) Um, I don't feel so good. I think I just want to... Can I sit down for a little bit, guys? Can I, can I just sit? Uh, of course, Alma. I would also like to take a moment. Uh, and I, my back is going to hit the back of the cave wall, and I'm just slowly still picking out little pieces of, like, wood and bark and moss and... Just a, just a <laughs> couple moments, actually, would be great. Yeah, yeah. I'll help you try it, and I'll like put my hand up and start <laughs> just picking the debris off of him and brushing it away, kind of like um like like peeling a sunburn. 
just uh. feeling, just getting some sat- some like nice like satisfaction from just like strips of bark. <laughs> <laughs> and that one. Had a- oh, I'm sorry. That one had a feather attached to it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll I'll be more careful. Uh. Um. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I would. I would like this to be a short rest, if I if I can can argue for that. Is, oh yes. Is everyone in for a short rest? Um, yeah. How far away is the entrance to the um, where the, where we entered? This, um, this... The entrance is you guys walked in quite a ways. I'd say somewhere between 250, 300 feet back. How how long would it take to maybe like get to it? I was my, I'm cu- I'm curious if we could maybe drag one of the bodies to the entrance so people know when they're coming down they see a dead body of a monster maybe not to come down this tunnel just to I mean it was a pretty straight shot it okay. wouldn't it wouldn't take that much in order okay. to do that I'll just no. start dragging a monster back that way to like hey um I'm gonna I don't know I don't want anyone to come down here I'm gonna mark I'm gonna pull these bodies at the entrance maybe if anyone comes here they'll see it and they won't venture in here and and they won't end up and I'll point to the dwarf like that uh can I see uh. Does this tunnel extend further, or we have we come to its natural conclusion? You can see that the tunnel does extend further. Okay. I suppose. Uh, wish there were more decent ways of communicating that, but uh, that's that's expeditious of you. Yeah, I mean, I could send it up if we can find a way to send. I don't know. I think it might be better to leave it at the entrance because then, if people come by it, they'll see it. Or we could make a sign. Can you make a sign? I, I can write. I, I don't know if we have other materials about. Well, but can the miners read? I. I'm gonna start with the body. Would be surprised. I don't know what the practices are like in Kaldor as far as the education goes. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll start checking the body towards the entrance. Uh, I can, I can, DM, can I have a short rest? <laughs> I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> Me too. Yes, you can. Me too. Please. Yes. Um, as as you guys are doing this, these are not. Um, as uh, actually, except for Flynn, who is dragging a body, I would say everyone is is able to get a, a short rest. As Flynn is the only one actually. Okay, so it takes about an hour something. to get there. Uh, actually, no, it would not. If I would be able to, I mean, if we want to take a little bit extra, if I come back and I just rest. Flynn, with them. you can get a short rest too, and, and it's actually not it's not that far away. Okay. You'd be able to easily drag and come uh, back. Whenever I yeah. get to the entrance, uh, I'll, on my way back before I head back, I'd like to. Um, take my sword and cut off an arm and throw it in the bag holding. Okay. And then I will head back. And I will sit down and I will write about these scary freaking things in my book. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, as you begin writing, uh, yeah. I mean, with a with a perfect five now remaining yeah. templates <laughs> right in front of you, um, you begin writing and take note of, of this cool. entire creature. Um, let me see. Well, help. Nice. Um, as you are looking over and studying this creature, Flynn, um, you take note of its uh, of its natural armor, as you had, had you, as you all had experienced within the battle. Um, you take note of its natural armor, and you sort of take note of what it would take in order to pierce through that armor. Um, now knowing it's it's AC of fifteen. And uh, beyond that, you study its, uh, you begin to study its eye, this big green and yellow eye in the front. Um, and having specifically been on the receiving end of one of its, its effects, um, you now know that it has uh, a, what you write down as a rotting gaze, um, where it can stare right at you. Um, and forcing you to to have to steady yourself, otherwise taking necrotic damage. And real quick, Flynn, another thing that you would that you would note is okay. um, this: uh, these Nothics, um, as you're uh, again studying their natural armor, do not appear to have any uh, resistances or weaknesses okay. to any sort of damages. Okay. <sighs> Yeah. Some weird eyes, man. Those really hurt. Yeah, be careful about those. It seems like they like mess with you. I, know, I... M- mess mess with you how? Just mess with your brain. Just like I was looking at it and I was checking it out and it like it hurt. Give me like a headache. forever. Mess with your brain forever. Well, no. When I looked away from it, it kind of went away, but I don't know. Just be careful. 
as, watch, I, as I'm writing in my book. Watching you during that fight, the two of you, um, I could tell your souls were suffering, but I couldn't make heads or tails of how it was happening, so... Yeah, I'm not used to feeling like that with no blood. Something pernicious of that. Yeah, like I was saying, I still kind of have a headache right now. I feel a little bit better, actually. I'm kind of fine. Maybe you should just sit. Okay, and I'll close my book after writing a little bit more and just kind of like close my eyes and lean back a little bit. Um, We know, DM, that th- this is not the lowest tunnel, right? We were headed to the lowest one and then we that stopped That is correct. Short. Um, the okay. elevator, you guys specifically stopped on this at this tunnel in order to go in, but you know the elevator goes down much further. Okay. Uh, Do you think there's more of those things? Almost definitely. Oh. I mean, this group, uh, if I had to make a guess of it, I'd say this is a, a pack of hunters. If they're anything like um, other <laughs> species of the world, then this there would be a place for them to return to after a hunt. Oh, like a nest? Uh, I don't know. Oh, gross. Unless this is it, but this just looks like a tunnel. I don't want to find their nest. No, nor do I. So, we just keep going down? I suppose. uh, Are you sure? Because we could just go, we could just leave now, right, guys? We could just leave now. I would be uh, in favor of uh, that uh, course of action. We've already resolved (laughs) ourselves to take care of this trouble. Yeah. To to whatever extent we can. uh, We we first have to identify... uh, uh, what the stakes are. Right, but we didn't know that these things were down here, and they're spooky. We'll just be careful. We've, we've seen them now. We need to try and avoid them. Okay. But eventually... Eventually, I just, like, we will get super tired and won't be able to do anything. So. Well, and the world uh, possesses untold depths, and I sort of, like, look toward the tunnel that we have not yet even traversed down the length of. This could go on and on. And we have to find uh, some way to contact the drow. I think we just go further down and maybe we'll run into some of them or at least a a way to contact them. Do you have a plan? Improvise. Improvise? Yeah. That, we, that's your plan? Improvise? It's worked out so that, far. That's not really a plan. I don't know much about the minds of Kaldor, right? But from our previous experience, they were labeled with signs of two crowns. Yeah. If we can find something like that, then that's a, where to go. Okay. Uh, before we head out, can I look at one of the... Or could I maybe have done this during the short rest? Could I examine the body and see if there's any... Um, Markings. Uh, I'm assuming no clothes, but like any maybe engravings or brandings on on these beasts or monsters. On these beasts, um, sure. Make oh, maybe, either a medicine or investigation check. Or maybe like two skulls or anything. Yeah. Okay. Investigation. Roll a one. Nice. Roll a four. <laughs> um, <laughs> so a total of six. Total of six. Don't see anything in particular. That's it. No worries. Yeah. All right. Um. Well. I, mean, I guess my head's feeling as. This is gonna get. I'm, I'm ready to go if y'all are. Yeah. Uh, um. DM, do I know of the um of the subterranean architecture of this world? Um, do I know a distinction between like uh what would be considered a mined out mountain versus uh something else I guess <laughs> yeah so um, you you do know that that deep deep below the surface of Elbor there is the underdark okay. um, where there are civilizations there are massive caverns um, bigger than you can even see from any one point um, but from what you know they they are much much deeper down than this you would have to pretty much you would have to travel for a couple days in order to, to get down that far and you guys have only gone a couple minutes in this elevator right okay okay I, I think if we can 
Yeah, we'll, we'll know when to stop if we touch the if we start to see the signs of the underdark uh, I've never seen it he said but um, how far down is that mushrooms uh, creatures like this but more uh, m- disturbing <laughs> for lack of a better word how far down is that v- very far how like what's the underdark I don't know that we have time right now for me to get into it, Alma, but uh, it's where my people are from. Your people? Well, some of my people. Um, it's a place far below the surface of the realm uh, where an uh, uh, entirely different civilization takes place. But that, that, we're not going anywhere near there for this excursion, though. Well, I mean. There's a chance, and I don't uh, know. Uh, but based on based chance. on what we heard from Graham Senior, the the drow may have come up through the Underdark to this mine. Ugh. Because if the mine plunges deep enough to hit the Underdark, then there's going to be a squabble, no doubt about it. I, uh, yeah, maybe they maybe they've dug so far down, we finally reached it. It's, it's very far. It take quite a bit of a plunge. When we were on the DM, when we yes. were on the surface, did it look like they were continuing to dig, or were they more just ex, um, ex, 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 excavating? Excavating. Thank you. <laughs> excavating what was already dug, like, or were they going down more? Um, from approaching and uh, and coming down, you could see that there are tunnels, much like the one that you're in, that expand outward mm-hmm. um, all around. But you can't even see down to the bottom of this this central sort of cylinder that goes into um, the the surface here. It is very possible that they're still digging downward for it, but from what you have seen personally with your own eyes, it is all Mostly. going outward. Out. Okay. Um, but again, you can't even see the bottom to yeah. know. And there was nothing on the surface that implied, like, big tools that were for... Nothing downers. on the surface, okay. no. When I was um, dropping off the monster at the entrance, and remind me again, was this the lowest we could have gone? No, the elevator continues to go down. Uh, do we want to go down the path, or do we want to take the elevator? Don't think it makes much sense to go down the path unless we want to find the nest. And no. I sort of look grimly at the uh, yeah. corpses around us. Yeah, I think... Maybe we just take the elevator. Yeah, I think so. I mean, if 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 you don't want to find these things, right? You want to find yeah. the things that are coming up. All right. It does make me worry that. How do you save people from all these things down here? Like maybe people just shouldn't dig if there's all these things down here. I mean, these things lived here first. Well, how A do you very save- very valid point. <laughs> <laughs> how do you save? Shrias people from the spiders that live in that forest. Um, uh, by that, I mean the, the elves, of course, of the Shadow Timberland, not uh, Tito. I, well, I don't know much about If Tito. you have respect for them, uh, then they will coexist along with you, and, and in that sort of way, there is a perfect harmony that can be achieved, can be, with first, first, the awareness of what it is that, well, or I suppose in this world, you know who your neighbors are, so to speak. Well, if neighbors can't even get along on the surface, how are they supposed to get along from the ground to the surface? It didn't, really, it didn't really seem like those things wanted to coexist with us when we showed up down in here. The spiders did not coexist with Farlane's soldiers either. Yeah, yeah, but there was all that black stuff taking over, right? That wasn't their fault. There was just the darkness in the, in the, in the forest. I will say I wasn't there long enough to figure out if those spiders were native to those woods, or whether they were intruders of their own. I... Right. Uh, Sometimes you just have to take action. Well... I... Yes. With regard to the... I mean, the Cyclops we encountered in the woods, he was a hunter, a a fisherman like James. He constructed that marvelous device that was intended to make a meal of Alma, and it's not so different from the intent of James when he goes out on the river. Uh... It, yeah. It's up to us to draw uh, boundaries between uh, otherwise hostile civilizations and, and to navigate those conflicts without harming each other. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how. 
and I solemnly get up and I will ex coquo disintegrate the rest of these uh, the bodies of the Nothics and also the uh, dwarf. Did you get what you needed to get? Yeah. What'd you get? I just took something from the one that's at the entrance. What'd you get? Well, I took his hand. His hand? Gross. Yeah. And we're leaving him at the entrance as a warning sign. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to make a sign, you can. And I'll start walking towards the entrance. Uh, I'm walking toward the entrance, too. As long as we can keep things moving, I do not like being down here. You didn't have anything else you could take? You had to take a hand? That's so gross. What about like a tooth or like, or like, I don't know. I'll just yell back from 30 yards away. Sometimes you just have to take action. What? I don't know how those two ideas relate. Those don't relate to each other at all, Kellek. Do you have anything to make a sign with on my, all I have is this bloody rope. Um. (laughs) Um. Um. (laughs) Spell out letters with the rope. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I have a scroll. Oh. Um, some parchment? Yeah, I, I have some parchment, but I, I... I don't know. Maybe you can use some, like, soot or something to make letters, because I... I don't have anything to, like, write on it with. I have some charcoal, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Well, here you go. You can have, <laughs> you can have my... Perfect. Thank you. And I will... I will, uh... Write in common... Danger... Monsters. I will pin this sign to the front entrance uh, as as in the most well lit area I can. Okay. Um, <laughs> how would I go about doing that? Can I like hang it on a, a torch post or something? Is there like a, some some metallic instrument that I as, could? As you walk up, actually, there there is just like a little bit of of rock that's sort of jutting out from the side of, of this, where this this entrance to the mine is. Um, and if you sort of put the paper up onto it and sort of stick it through the paper, it would stay. Okay. And then um, a standing nobis, and I will light up the paper with the light ketchup. Okay. Nice. Uh, and then ex coquo, I will disintegrate the body of this monster. All right. And I... Uh, um, I'll I'll sort of um, sidle up to uh, Flynn uh, as we make our way back onto this elevator, and I, without looking at him, will say, "Let me put it to rest when you're done with it, right?" And then not looking at him. Yeah. All right. All right. And you're all getting back on the elevator. Yep. All right. Um, as you all hop back on. You um, turn the switch downward once more, and you begin descending even further and further into the darkness. Um, As you guys descend a couple of floors down, anyone who does not have dark vision um, begins to lose sight as as this darkness encroaches all around you. Um, I'm gonna pick up the torch that I already that I had. Like I still have that. I Mm -hmm. I put it out, but I'm gonna yeah, and I'm gonna um, cast a, a fireball bolt. To the top of it okay. to light it. All right. Um, so you do now have a, a source of light, as you can see. Uh, you guys moving further and further down, and as you get further and further down, you once again see um, more tunnels moving outward along this this central cavern. As you're all moving down, Kellick, you're sort of you're looking around at all of these different tunnels, and just for a moment, you look down into the darkness and with your vision you can you can just barely see what might be like a fog or a mist down there okay because you guys are slowly descending towards it um is it what's like the temperature like is it a it, can i feel what the you, airflow is like you all haven't you all haven't descended into it just uh. yet but as you're looking down, probably a hundred feet down, you can uh, see like this blanket of of this gray fog. Okay, and it's like opaque. Yeah, it it, it obscures your vision just a little bit. 
going down. You can still see the walls extending down beyond where it starts. So it, it's got some vision through it, but um, like uh, picture heavy mist. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll hold my hand up to whoever's operating that elevator. Just, just a moment. Um, if I can stop here. I'll, uh, pull in, stop okay. the elevator. There's, a um, there's a fog below us. A fog? Hi. How can there be fog underground? I don't know. Isn't that something that only happens, like, on the surface? Not a geologist. I have no idea. Um, I suppose you could produce fog a number of ways, or if we were to light a a fire down here, it could be a smoke. Uh, Do you want me to try to light it on fire? No, I mean, like, if we if we made a bonfire, it wouldn't have anywhere to go. So it, it fog and as, up an area. as the rest of you sort of look and and peer over the edge of this this elevator to see what Kellick is is looking at, the rest of you who have now full vision because of this light don't see anything you just see the tunnel begin just continue to descend into darkness um yeah, like I don't see anything where's the fog yeah there's nothing down there what do you mean it's, it's right there no there's no fog there's a dense uh, there's a heavy mist uh, uh, I, I can't see past it yeah, like, I, I don't know what to tell you I just see it going down I, I, I mean I still can't see the end but I don't see anything blocking. Uh, uh, and I, I, I start to like cover my eyes and uncover my eyes and 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 look at it and like uh, try to like fixate my eyes on different points in within the 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 mist. Chero Oculus, and I'll use eyes of the grave. Okay. I'm assuming it remains the same. It remains the same. Um, can I try to, um, uh, I'll hand my, uh, um, try, can you take the torch for a second? Yes. Um, I'll rub my hands together and, like, do a swishing motion with them. <laughs> um, um. And I want to try to shape water, but I don't see anything. So, like, I'm just trying to see if, if there's anything that I can't see there that's water-ish. Okay. And I'm going to try to turn it to ice, like freeze it. Okay. Um, you cast a shape water, and as you reach out, you just don't feel anything that you can latch on to. Um, and you, you feel like the spell dissipates without having any effect. And to, to back that up, Kellick, you do not see any change in the mist. Does it look to me like a, can I distinguish between like smoke, like fire, or like uh, the mist from a storm, for example? Like, what, does it look wet? For sure. Um, it, uh, yeah, it has, um, it doesn't have like the heaviness of something from a fire where you would see if something was burning, you would typically see a little bit of ash or like some, some more, um, particles in yeah, the air. Yeah. It just looks like a very even blanket of thick air. Kelly, yeah, like I'm sorry, I don't see anything. And also, like, that should have frozen it. And, and I know sometimes what I do doesn't work, but it felt like it was working if there was anything there. I am sitting right now on this ever-descending elevator, just peering into the flame. <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting on my butt with my knees up to my chest one arm wrapped around my knees, and I'm rocking slightly and changing the color of the flame to keep myself occupied. Okay. Do we see any more carts going further, uh, elevators going further down? Do we hear, or do we see any more tunnels where we're at currently, where we've stopped, and do we hear anything from those tunnels? Yeah, so looking around, you do see a couple of tunnels on the level that you're at going inward. You don't see any activity, though. Um, Though starting at the top as you were descending down, um, the first sort of layer of tunnels that were going out, you saw a lot of activity. People coming in and oh, out, okay. carts being loaded and, and uh, on the elevators and being brought back up. But as you're descending further and further down, um, you're seeing less and less activity. And now at this point, you don't see anyone around you. You also just take note that it is still 
early morning. It hasn't even been an hour since these people have, have okay. gone on the job for the morning. Um, so it is very possible that people are just are making their way down. But at this level that you're currently at, you don't see anyone. Um, how far away are we from this from this veil of mist? About 50 feet up. 50 feet? Yeah. Uh... And looking at it more, strangely, whereas a normal cloud or something would sort of wouldn't come to a direct end. It would sort of dissipate after a couple of feet. This comes to a pretty direct end. Right. It looks like a like a block of mist. It looks like, like a block, yes. Yeah. I'm going to take a stick of incense from my bag and just drop it over the edge to see if it penetrates this mist or and or creates any kind of motion in okay. it. Okay. Um, you drop it down, and right as it makes contact with this, this top layer of mist, you sort of see it um, sort of poof out just a little bit as the as the incense falls and then form back together. Um, just as uh, a normal air current of something being dropped through would sort of dissipate it around it for just a brief moment and then form back together. The rest of you just see some incense dropping uh, down into the depths. Light the next one. Uh, that feels... All right, sure. Um, and I will... Use my tinderbox. Why does the give okay. incense? We have a we have a torch going. Oh, we have a torch going. Okay. Well, I will light the stick yeah, of incense on the torch. Yeah. Don't take it away from me. <laughs> and I will. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, and I will just drop it gingerly over the side. Okay. The exact same thing happens where it dissipates just a little bit, but then forms back together as a, a gaseous. Do we thing see would. anything? Yeah. How far down? The rest of you do not see anything. You just see the tunnel continuing. Calic, I still don't see anything. I'm sorry. I just don't. I don't think there's anything there. Does it go down further? Do we see? Do we lose the tunnel? The tunnel goes past further than you can see. But even like that light goes away as that far. Yes. Eventually, after a couple minutes, the light just gets so small. The darkness over. Maybe we should just go up a bit and ask some of the miners some questions. DM, when I uh, approached the mystic in. Um, Blackpool, he blocked my vision as he pushed me out the door. Mm -hmm. Does this remind me of that in any way? It doesn't feel like your vision is being blocked. It, To you, it literally looks like there's a layer of mist there that descends deep into the, into the ground. It doesn't feel like, like your vision is being obscured from anything. You I feel like you can see just fine. I don't know, Flynn. I think we should just keep going. Well, I mean, that goes down far. Yeah, well, we're trying to get to where they are, so where the where the drow lives, Hang so on. we have to just keep going. Hang on. Um, I, I can see in the dark. Right? Okay. And I can see this mist that none of you can. When well, I when I dropped the incense down, did it disappear? No, no, we could see it keep going until it, until it got so far low that we couldn't yeah. see it anymore. Yeah. Um. Oh, standing nobis. And I, regrettably, because I already used it on the other thing, I'll light, I'll light a stick of incense with the light cantrip, and I will drop that into this thing. And once again, the exact same thing happens. It stays yeah. lit as it enters the mist? It stays lit. Yeah. Okay. See, and there it goes. It's just dropping and dropping and dropping and eventually... And there... Oh, oh, oh and no, yeah. it's gone. Can't see anymore. All right. Well, that just proves that idea. There's stories told. My, um, my mother could create darkness just out of nothing. Just create darkness? Yeah, she had a, a, a knack for it. Well, I mean, I create a lot of fire, so why wouldn't there be somebody who could create darkness? That 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 tracks. So I thought maybe this was that, but I suppose not. Do you think your mom's down here? No. Oh. No, my mother's dead. This. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it's fine. Nothing. Um, it happens. Uh. It. I. I guess. It certainly does. I'm sorry to reveal this to you now, Alma, but uh, yeah, your your parents will not live forever. 
Even if they're elves. Well, I don't even know if they're alive now, so... Okay. I meant more generally speaking. It was... Anyway. How, how precarious anyway. is this? <laughs> that we're just teetering around. How to strike? <laughs> um, you don't want to look over. Yeah, there. there's, there's like, there's like a very small like rope ledge or like a rope um, right. keeping this, this uh, keeping you guys on this elevator. But really, it's it's precarious. Guys, um, maybe we should either. Make a choice. I mean, I mean, I, I'd be down to talk to the miners, get some information on what's down here. But if you just want to go, we can just go. Yeah, let's just go. Okay. I'd like to make a spooky vibes check. Ooh. <laughs> okay, make a spooky vibes check. <laughs> before, yeah. before we go. Well, I think uh, you're the only one. Try is the yeah. only one who's able uh, to do I it. Can I give him advantage? Can Try help me with a spooky vibes check? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh. If, you're, if you're looking for spooky vibes too, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very yeah. much. Yeah. Jesus. Okay, maybe it's just me. It's not the dice. An advantage. Oh, an advantage, right? Cool. Good. Much better. Nice. Uh, you nice. need advantage sometimes in your life. You know? <laughs> Don't we all just need a little things. bit of advantage? Yeah. You know, goodbye with Spooky you. Spooky, yeah. The most important checks we'll ever make. It's an 18. An 18. Um, Kellick, you do not feel as though this is at all dangerous. Huh. You don't get any right. malicious vibes. No spooky wow. vibes. No spooky vibes. This I, is exciting. Yeah. See, spooky vibes are getting really exciting because it I used to be go. every time there were they spooky vibes, it used to be yeah. a guarantee. Now, now it's like, mysterious. oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, Kaylik, okay, like, you do not feel as though this poses any danger to you. Yeah, like, how are you feeling? Uh, I just wave my hand. Uh, let's go for it. Let's, right. uh, let's see what's below. And I'll lower, start lowering the elevator again. Uh, if Maybe it's that weird thing with your eyes, how they're getting all cloudy. Maybe that's the problem. It Maybe be. it's just I, your eyes. Your eyes are getting cloudy, and for the first time in a while, I'll actually look into his eyes and see. What, what are they? Uh, yeah, I. I don't know. More recently, I've been able to see very well in dark areas, huh. and, and not so great. I know, but another like look. Do you see kind of a? Do you see there's kind of a film over them? Like they're like yeah. Hmm. And as they're looking into <laughs> Kellogg's <laughs> eyes, um, <laughs> Kellogg, you see the the layer of mist as you guys pass down below it. It rise up to your ankles, your hips, and past your heads as you guys descend into it. Um, Oma, Shreya, and Flynn, I'm going to have you all make a uh, constitution what? saving throw for me. Oh, a con save? Wow. wow. <laughs> I said we got to win. I'm talking to the miners. That's a 16 for Oma. Okay. Ooh, 24 for... for 11 for me. No. Okay. So scared. Um, Shreya, you take one point of poison damage. Oh! <gasps> What's wrong? Uh, some, I, uh, not to trust the depths of this world. Are you right, Shreya? I'll be fine. Did we feel anything? Uh, did uh, Ulm and I feel anything when we were going through? Um, As... Kalik sort of noted that you guys were, were actually in this. You don't, your vision once again does not change. It seems like you're just traveling down this tunnel. Yeah. Um, but you felt just like a little tiny bit of a sting on the back of your throat um, as if you were you know, walking into as if you were like breathing into a, a mist or a fog or something. Quick clarification. Yes. I'm, I just took a point. I'm not actually in the condition of. That is correct. Okay. Just a point of damage. You are not currently okay. poisoned. Great. <clears throat> Do oh, I? Weird. Yeah. Does it taste funny to me at all? No. Okay, like you are fine. I just look suspiciously at the group and at this mist. Are we still within it? Yeah, you guys are still heading down. As we're going down, can I look and see how far this mist goes? Make a perception check. And as you're looking, I'm going to have Oma, Shreya, and Flynn make another yeah. constitution oh. saving throw. Twelve. Uh, Seventeen. Another sixteen. Shreya, you take wow. two points of poison damage. Oh. Are you okay? <laughs> no. No. Ow. Should we go up? <laughs> uh, uh, That's an eighteen on... No, I'm sorry. That's a twenty-one on perception. Uh, twenty-one. You cannot see an end to this mist. No. Yeah, let's let's go back. Let's go back. Yeah, I'll switch it up, and I'd like to keep going up until we find activity in the mines again. Okay. As you switch it back up, I'm gonna have all of you make one more Constitution saving throw. <laughs> Another twenty-four. Thirteen. Eight. <laughs> Olma and Shry, you both take three points of poison damage. <laughs> oh, you know this oh, doesn't feel good. Just- it just looked like mist to me. As <coughs> Kellogg, you see, you break the veil and ascend back up. 
What in the hells? Man, but we're supposed to find them! Ha! And that whole time we couldn't see any any farm. It just looked like you were in a tunnel. Oh well, we can say <laughs> we tried. Well, we're yeah, still trying. Yeah, but that doesn't defeat Flynn's stupid note. And we're here, and I'd like to land at the uh, area where there's like maybe an activity. Uh, do I see anyone that I can talk to? Yeah, so um, as you're heading back up, you do see that there is a, another platform that you guys come to um, where a couple of humans are just sort of unloading all of their gear. You can see them getting out their mining tools and just starting to set up. All right, I'll, uh, I'll just head off the elevator and walk over to them. Okay. Hi, um, I'm from Flint Fellow Eve, and uh, I'm part of the Iron Lake Collective. And... Um, and one of the the humans walks over to you, um, a uh, an middle aged uh, human man, um, and he reaches out to shake your hand, and he says, "Hi, uh, Randall Lavore." And I'll I'll stick out my hand. Hi, hi, Randall. Um, so I'm here trying to to find some drow. Really, I've heard that there's a problem down here, and I, well, you I, came to the right place. I mean, well, we tried to go further, but uh, one of my Someone I know uh, said that it, there's fog down there, and we tried to go through it, and hmm. it hurt one of my f- colleagues. I'm very sorry to hear that. Um, we actually got orders a couple days ago uh, not to to go too much further down. Um, and we just don't want to be disturbing any activity up there. I think I think the company doesn't want just a regular Joe like me to be having the first contact with the drow. Um, I think what they want that. What? Why? What's down there? I don't know. I, like I said, okay. I haven't been down there in a couple of days. Okay. Um, Me and well, my men have just been uh, excavating this tunnel here. Well, how do we find the drought? Presumably, you just keep going down. Down that? And I'll point down the open hole where we Yeah. Are. That's uh, that's where they've come up every time so far. I'm going to yell from, from kind of like behind Flynn. Or like, wait a week, right? Because they're just going to like come up to the surface. Is that what they've been doing? Yeah. Uh... About every week or so. So, danger and peril, or wait a week. Um, while they're having this conversation, can I look at Shreya and just see, like, like try to comprehend the nature of the the pain he was experiencing? Make a medicine check. Uh, ten. Ten. Uh, from what you saw, most likely a toxin in the air. Okay. That was affecting him right. and his, his breathing. Just tried to do some that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But it, yeah, but I wouldn't be able to tell if it was like a natural toxin versus like a, a you No, you wouldn't be able to tell that. Okay. That's the only way to find them is to go through whatever is down there. I, I haven't spoken to them personally. Um, I, I just saw them once, as a matter of fact. Um, so I don't know a way to get in contact with them or anything. I mean... I wonder how much lower they are from that little like area because maybe we can just yell at them and ask them if they can come up and talk. Well, uh, I, I mean, a couple weeks ago, before we were ordered to stay up on some of the, the top levels, um, me and my team were going further and further down. It's it's quite a ways down there. Um, it's it's going to take you probably a half half a day to a day to get to the Whoa. bottom of, of what we were doing. We actually began setting up camps way down there so, you know, people didn't have to come all the way back up uh, every time that they wanted to change yeah. And did it hurt your throat the entire time? No. When was the last time you went down? A couple weeks ago. When was the last time anyone went down? No one's been down there in at least a week, a week and a half. Maybe it's recent because they didn't want you setting up camps in their hometown. Who's the... I don't get what's what's recent. I don't understand. Who's the person that is in charge of sending people further down in there? Who's the one that gave the order to not go Oh, further? we got the station master up, up top. Where is he stationed right now? I mean, he's probably up top. Um, there's uh, we, We've got up there, we've got um, a little outpost. Um, it's just uh, a couple of buildings up there. It's really nothing too fancy, but uh, that's where all the paperwork and everything is done. Maybe we go talk to him. No one else has answers. Maybe he'll be able to tell us more. Alternately, I could go down by myself. I, I was unaffected by whatever's. I mean, we could also try covering our mouths, but maybe the station master, you said? Yeah, the station master. Maybe the station master has information of what that is. 
Uh, I don't know, Cal. Like, it's a good idea for you to go down and maybe ask if somebody wants to be an emissary. Uh, it stands to reason that they wouldn't execute one of their own, even a half breed, right away. I don't know. Um, mm-hmm. That makes me un. I also need to. When go you down. talk about executing like that, it makes me sad. So maybe don't. Yeah, I'll, I'm sorry, but uh, uh, try. Uh, I, I think Flynn's reasoning is sound. I think it's worth us getting more information. But uh, try. Uh, I've seen you manipulate um, the currents of the air. Do you think you could maybe blow the smoke away? I certainly could if it was something I could see and understand, and attempt to manipulate. But like. Like uh, our fellows here, I couldn't see anything. What about with a, f- a flap of your wings or something? Uh, I don't know how. Uh, you seem quite mighty in the sky there. Uh, yeah, they're mighty. They can support my own weight, but and I... and our our uh, and sometimes our yes, sturdy they are little halfling friend, <laughs> sturdy young short one. <laughs> but I I don't I don't know if it could move. To the extent that it would need to, I'm not sure. It's quite a bit of toxic fog, so... It also goes down for a, a, almost a day, so... Well, we don't really know... Well, that's what... Oh, he's this guy said... What Randall said. All oh, right. Well, but we don't know that the smoke goes down that whole way. Right, but I mean, even if we wanted to go... To, I mean, it's a whole day's journey. I'm... No, I, I think you're right. Let's, let's go, let's let's go, go talk to the... And I'll head back over to the elevator. And I, if, if everyone is... And I'll, I'll turn... I know if wanted to talk about this so is is everyone on board with that is that does it work for all parties going to the surface going to talk to the station manager i mean i don't want to be in the spooky cave anymore so yeah that, that works for me yes let's get out of here <laughs> i'll uh, go over and <laughs> head back up to the surface and okay try and find this outpost all right um and as you do you look around and um randall had kind of pointed in the direction that the south post was so as soon as you hit the top level, you look sort of in the general direction, and um, right next to a couple of those those massive metal um, furnaces that you had seen on approach, uh, right next to it are a couple buildings. All right, I'll head towards uh, the, the, the buildings and uh, see if I can discern if there's anyone in them or if I can discern the outpost or the officers. Definitely. Um, actually, as you approach, there is one sort of larger building that's flanked by two smaller buildings, and the larger building has these large... It, in construction, it almost looks like a barn. And in the front, it's got these large barn doors that are wide open, and as you look in, you can see that there's um, like this big U-shape of tables inside. And you can see a couple people walking around, but right at the head of that U-shape, um, you can see a figure sitting there. Um, upon your approach, all of you see a a very large creature. Um, probably, he's sitting. So from, from what you can see, probably about eight feet tall. Um, and as you look, very broad shoulders, fur coating the entire body you can see the face coming to this dark muzzle and horns protruding from the back of the head that circle all the way down and come close to the jaw as you see a massive minotaur sitting there at the table with a little quill out, very, very daintily signing some papers. Before um, we walk into the barn, I'm gonna like quickly grab Flynn's shoulder Mm -hmm. um, or his sleeve. Um, Flynn? Yeah. We weren't really asked to be here other than by, like, one person. So, like, maybe don't, like, imply that we're here to save the day or anything. Like, we maybe we should have a better solution of why four strangers are here rather than just, like, we want to talk to the drow. Like, maybe, 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 maybe not say that. Maybe, maybe, I, don't, I, I have no suggestions. I'm just, like, maybe come up with something other than, like. If you want, I could just go in alone. It's not about that. I don't care. I don't care about whether we go in with you. I just think like. What's your concern, Alma? Uh, I mean, in theory, we're here accepting a contract on behalf of the Iron Light. Yeah, but it was just the dad who asked for help. So like, they didn't contract you. So maybe 
they don't want you. So the, maybe they don't want the iron light here. I, I, I'm just saying, maybe you should say something other than like, hi, I'm Flint Fellow, even I'm with the iron light collective. I'll think about it. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm just saying. We're not here, like, as an authority, really, right? We're just here to help? Yeah. O okay. And I'll head in. Good talk. Okay. Um, as you head in, it's it's just very easy to, to get around. No one really seems to even take note of you. Um, are you walking right up to the Minotaur? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um... As you walk up, he sort of looks up and makes eye contact with you, and you can see these, like, dark red eyes and uh, these piercing pupils as he stares down at you. What do I know about minotaurs? Do I know if they're inherently evil? Do I know if they're a normal thing to see in today's society? Um, make a history check for me. Fifteen. Um, you would know that they are pretty rare as a species. Um, you don't, there's like no, like, set alignment for them. Mm -hmm. Um, you've seen, uh, stories of some that are, um, the quote-unquote good guys of a story. There are some that are the bad guys of the story. Mm -hmm. Um, you know that, uh, a couple of classes before you at Iron Light there was actually a Minotaur student oh, okay. um, that made his way through the training and actually became a sentinel. Okay. Um, but after about a decade of being on the job was was killed okay. um, in action. So they are inside of it. It's very, very rare. Very, very rare. Okay. Yes. Okay. Is there anybody else in this room besides us? Yes, you can see that there are a couple of humans, a couple of dwarves, um, a couple of halflings. Okay, just sort of handling. It seems like they're doing paperwork. Um, as as you could gather from this site, um, there's a lot of stuff being exported. And so you can see people working on what types of materials are being exported, um, the materials that need to be brought in, in order, the equipment, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So you see all that paperwork being handled. Okay. Hello? Hello. Um, I was wondering to ask a few questions about the mine. I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, I'm just finishing something up. Give me two seconds here. Sure. And he finishes writing something on one of the pieces of paper. A human comes by and sort of leans down and picks them up. And the minotaur leans over and whispers something in his ear. The human nods in agreement um, and walks away. The minotaur folds his hands in front of him. All right, what can I help you with? Could I have caught anything that he was writing or whispering? Yes, make a perception check. Total of 20. A total of 20. Um, you saw that what he was filling out looked to be an equipment order um, that had uh, different tools that were going to be needed, um, just general mining equipment on it. And you could just barely hear under his breath, he says, and make sure nothing is missing from the list this time. Um, hi, uh, so my group and I, uh, were traveling through the, uh, the tunnel and we overheard that there were problems, um, in the mines and I'm, I'm just curious to know what's going on. And the, uh, some of the miners told me you were the person to talk to. Oh, um, uh, of course I'm, I'm happy to answer, uh, any questions that you have. Um, yes, we have had uh, our run-ins with the drow, as I'm sure if you had spoken to any of my miners, they would have told you. Um, the, the drow have been coming up and um, uh, attempting to negotiate a takeover of our operations here. And time and time again, I've, I've told them no. And so um, we've unfortunately had to, to pull back our efforts over the last week and a half or so. Um, but beyond that, operations are as normal besides the depth with which we can mine. So, so they came up while you were digging down and said, stop, the mine's ours now. And so you stopped digging down and started digging out and they're still, uh, 
um, attacking? Um, well, there were, some of our men had gone missing. Right. Um, the drow have not claimed responsibility for that yet, um, but I, I assume that they most likely won't. Um, that is the main reason that I've pulled our, our men back is as, as much as this mine, you know, makes gold and, and uh, is, is very profitable, my men's safety is, is paramount to me. And if I don't have men, there's no work to be done here. So we pulled them all back. Can we hear this from where we are at the entranceway? Yeah, he's, uh, he's a very loud speaker uh-huh. and his voice sort of fills the room and you can hear. Yeah. I'm going to elbow Kellick on the side and say, Kellick? They probably don't know about those creatures that we found down there. I was just thinking that, Alma, but I'm getting some weird looks from the folks here. I don't know if they know uh, that I'm with the Iron Light Collective. Well, you're not. And I, I, I know. I, uh, it's been it's a bit of a joke. But I just He's not a very good joke. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I don't feel that I'm the best person to go up and say, oh. this wasn't Drow that killed your men. It was oh, one-eyed bipedal beasts well, that, that lurk sense. in the shadows. Do you think I should say that? Uh, you're a child. Uh, yeah, not very helpful. I know. We don't have a lot of, I don't know, dignified clout between well, us, do we? Well, maybe Flynn will say it. Or Shrya. What's Shrya up to? Does he just look nervous as hell? <laughs> I mean, if we're back above the surface at this point, I'm less shaken. We're still uh, in the mine proper, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, it's a more surface. open space. I, yeah. I, I, you guys, I'm, no, you guys surface. are on the we're surface. surface. Oh, you're yeah. on the surface. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm currently gazing, we, but we can still see the mine, right? Yes. From where we are. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just looking back and forth right now between the mine and where we are, and I'm still very much like, taking each moment as it's coming. <laughs> I'm uh, listening very closely now because I'm waiting to see okay. what, what Flynn says, whether he blames it on the drow or or tells them that there was. So, again, are, are they still coming up and trying to be aggressive even after you've stopped digging, changed up your efforts, and tried to compromise with them? Yes. Um, they've, they've continued to come up. Um, I, I've, I've told them repeatedly that they should cease making contact um, if, if this is how they're going to conduct their business. But unfortunately, my words have fallen on deaf ears. And it's and in their attacking, are they violent? Or are they just coming up and declaring that they want this area? You say no and they leave it peacefully. Well, the, the drow who come up and attempt to, to speak and um, make their case for themselves, they have never been violent. Okay. And... We have never seen them openly attack anyone, um, but with our men now missing, uh, we we can only come to one conclusion. Yeah. Um, And why do they feel like they have claim on this mine all the way up to the top? That is is something I don't know. They they seem to, uh, to, whether it be through conquest or or birthright, I, I do not know. And I've heard again and again that the only way to, f- to find them is to go almost a day's travel down that mine uh, or to come back in a week about. I'd like to help, but I, I don't really see a way to do that. Um, I mean, I, I don't know their exact patterns um, or e- exactly what their their goals are, but that is, is correct. About a week or so uh, between each visit. And do you know of any way I could help right now? Well, I, I see you have some, some weapons on you. Um, we were actually looking to uh, put a, a, a small force together in order to um, defend ourselves if, if things come to that. Right, and I'm here today, but from what I've heard, they're not going to be back for another week. I would be more than happy to pay you handsomely for your services uh, to, to stay here for as, as long as we need you. I have a lot of things to take care of. I'm a busy man. I I understand that completely. Um, Maybe one night. You are not obligated. I I, I understand that you're here uh, uh, just visiting, as you said before. Right. So you're under no obligation. Right. Do you think they would come tonight? 
from the patterns that I've seen previously, no. Well, I'm going to talk with my group and see what they're feeling. And if we can stay, we will. But if, if we have to move on... I would maybe appreciate we'll, that. Maybe we'll Just come let back. them know they would be paid handsomely for uh, for their services. Okay. And I'll uh, turn around and head back to the group. Have a good day. You as well. And I'll head back to the group. Flynn, you have to tell them that it's not the drow. Oh, yeah, I guess... Go tell him right now. You have that hand of the monster. Yeah, I'll go back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything else I can help you with? Uh, Yeah. And I'll go into my bag <laughs> and I'll pull out the hand of the Nothic and I'll put it on his table. Oh, gross. <laughs> so on our first attempt to go down to solve this problem, uh, we ran into a beast with a hand like this. Multiple, actually. Um, it's still at the entrance. Well, wait, no, this is all that we have left now. Um, but it was down there and it was beasting on one of your miners, I believe. Oh, shit. And he immediately slams his hands down on the desk um, and he stands up and he yells out of the doors and uh, he says, Isaac, collect the cold pikes. Get everyone out of the mine. Yeah. <laughs> I will quickly put the hand back in the bag. Sir, what can I do to help? Um, if you could help just getting everyone out of the mine, I would greatly appreciate that uh, as, as quickly as possible. Okay. As he begins running out of the door. And I'll run back to the group. Yeah, good idea. Oh my, that, that, that helped. And uh, we got to help ever get everyone out of the mine. Come on, come on, come on. I just like <laughs> bewildered at this whole exchange. All right. Yeah. And I'll head out the door and I'll run towards the mine and uh, get and ready as, to do as stuff. Soon as, you get out, as soon as you guys clear the barn, um, you you look over and you hear the same dwarven man who, um, with the with the whistle, had sort of been conducting the, the um, cart through the mountain. You see the same one um, run over to the mine and give a couple long blows on the whistle as everyone all of a sudden jumps in sort of a panic mode. Um, and you can see some people getting on elevators to go down. You see some people getting on elevators to come up um, as sort of this this frenzy begins happening as, as everyone comes out of the mine. Um, I would like to turn to Shreya. Shreya, I know, buddy, that you don't like this place, but we could save people right now. I, no one, absolutely no one can convince me that, that I can... <laughs> That I have to do anything that... And as you hear me uh, speaking, like, very vehemently, um, all of a sudden, I, I hear this little thing. Like, the crystal in my staff starts glowing. And I it's almost like my I draw it closer to my, my face and I, like, lean my head in toward it. I'm picking up hearing something from it all of a sudden. Uh, and as I bring the... One second, Flynn, one second. As I hear... I bring the crystal <laughs> closer and closer to my ear. Uh... Uh, all, all of a sudden you see my face uh, relax a little bit more and my jaw loosens uh, and uh, back yes I, I I know I have help I yes I know that it's life and life makes more life and we need to protect the living and the okay all right. Shia? okay and as uh, as as you see my expression completely shift uh, as I whisper, into the into the heart of the crystal, Eshval. and all of a sudden, um, out from the crystal, uh, almost as it mirror images itself, uh, you see a uh, little pixie pop out of it as I summon a uh, fake creature. Okay. <laughs> you, so cool. Help. Is it cute? <laughs> what is that? Is it cute? Uh, so it's this little pixie creature. It has the same color as the crystal. Oh. Uh, it has these little, like, tiny, like, features, almost like a, a... It looks a little bit like a tiny, little, like, evil-looking monster. Like, it's a humanoid, but it has these sharp, sort of spiky features and these uh, purple glowing eyes. Uh, and, and, uh, and, I, and I say, Um, I... We'll handle this. And uh, then you see us uh, take off toward the mine and then go down into it. And this, uh, Pixies can speak common too, so I'm going to instruct mm -hmm. it to, we're going to divide and conquer to get, tell people to get out of the mine. Okay. Um, I am going to have you make an athletics check to see how fast you can uh, get around this and, and start spreading the word. All I'm right. slack jawed. I, yeah, I literally yeah, am just I'm like, looking back and forth between Flynn and Oma. Uh, okay. <laughs> what do we do? Uh, I want one of those. 
Gotta be honest, I don't think it's a good idea for me to go off on my own. Uh, yeah, maybe stick with us. Instructing these men to abandon their posts. <laughs> uh, so that was a, I'm pretty sure, 21 on the athletics check. Okay. Oh, no, actually, no. Uh, 17. 17, okay. okay. Um, you are just gliding around the interior of this mine, and as you're going down level by level, you can see people packing up, um, and you you see um, one woman sort of trip as she's trying to collect all of her items, and you swoop down, and you pick her up, and you help her onto the elevator, and you look over to the opposite side, and you can see this uh, pixie creature also sort of like zipping between people, telling them, and they're all loading onto the elevators. As you hear down, um, sort of in that same area that you guys we're just, uh, we're just in uh, a cry for help. You hear, ah, help! Uh, I, along, I call the pixie over to me. Uh, the last thing the pixie would have been doing would have been speaking to the last person they were around. That person might have noticed that when the pixie opens its mouth, it has like these crystals for teeth, actually. <laughs> uh, and I said, no, get <laughs> over here. Of course. Yes. And, uh, and I summon the pixie to my side. Uh, with a new sen- a newfound sense of confidence, we both uh, dive down into where the cry for help is coming okay, from. Okay, and immediately in that entrance, um, you can see a uh, a dwarven man laying there on the ground, like crawling, um, arm over arm, trying to get out of this this mine. And you can see in one of the hands clutched uh, a piece of paper in the exact same th- oh, tunnel that no. you guys were in. Oh, come on, man. Um, as you see, <laughs> all of a sudden, they look up to you as their body is dragged back into the darkness. Uh, I'm going to dive bomb after this yeah. war and, uh, and attempt yeah. to grab its hands before it gets dragged back into the darkness. Okay, you drop down and you uh, you land at the entrance of this tunnel and you can see um, 10 feet away, 10 feet in front of you is this, uh, this dwarf being dragged away by one of these creatures. Just a single one? Just a single one. I'm going to whisper something to the the pixie. Uh, My my version of speaking pixie. Try is not very good at it yet. Uh, But it's going to communicate to the pixie to cast uh, sleep on the creature. Okay. Um, Right as that happens, I'm going to have you roll initiative for both yourself and the pixie. Great. Great. Not great. Uh, So I have... I got a... um, 17 initiative and the pixie find their initiative bonus should be their dexterity bonus oh their dex okay great uh so that's an 11 for the pixie okay so as you swoop in um first on the initiative is actually shraya so you give this command over to the pixie what would you like to do before the pixie can even react, what, react what do you want to, to do? the command. Yeah. Uh, I am going to uh, immediately uh, press my thumb to one of the flat surfaces of the crystal and aim it toward the wharf as I quickly... Uh, a point of light comes out of my forehead through the crystal and then touches the dwarf as I... Uh, healing word to the dwarf. Okay. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Roll it up. Alrighty. I'm gonna do that at third level too. Okay. Oh. Okay. Uh, that's nine points of healing to the dwarf. Nine points of healing. Nice. As okay. a purple glow washes over it, and pull, pull, pull. Uh, well, I guess my action could be to pull out my staff and to menacingly glower at the uh, Nothic. Okay. All right, next up, the Nothic um, jumps over this body that it is currently dragging, comes up face to face with you, and it is going to... Successful menacing glare there, Shreya. Yeah, Yeah. not so much. (laughs) (laughs) Let's see. Yeah, it's going to use its rotting gaze against you. So I'm going to have you make a constitution saving throw. Awesome. Shreya's really good at those, right? Not this time. <laughs> this time. Uh, that's a five. Yeah, that does not succeed. Oof. Of course. Yeah. That is going to be 14 points of necrotic damage. <laughs> Yikes. All right. He's going to wilt like, oh, in the crystal's man. light flickers and starts to dim a little bit more. 
Next up is the pixie. Uh, yeah, so the, I whispered it to cast the sleep command or the, the sleep spell Yes. on the nothing. Okay. Come on. As the pixie does that, um, is that that is a saving throw on my part? Yes. In the interest of keeping everything on the level, is, is the summon fate creature a uh, concentration? Because you have oh, yeah. to roll for that as well. Oh, I do. You're right. It, it is damage. concentration. Oh, yeah. See if yeah. I, yeah. see if I, see if I, I save. totally forgot about that. Because that's broken concentration. Right? I only know because of my spiders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I totally forgot. So what, I'm playing a fighter so for what, too long. What do yeah. I have to, have to you have succeed to on? A 10. Mm-hmm. a 10 or better? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. on a con save. Yeah. Hey! Nice. Okay. Nice. Concentration is kept. Yes. Thank you, Shane. Yeah. Um, you can... Sleep is like an AOE or something like that. It's a number of health it's points. It's like a health points. Yeah, so weird. I have to roll 5d8, oh, and the total is how many points the spell can affect. You need one. There's one. It's I, actually wild because they don't save. It's just about how much It's just HP if you can reach have. their HP, yeah. which is it's just one right now, so it could happen. Yeah. You need some more d8? Yeah, that'd be great. Oh, dude, I have so many. Out, y'all. Five. One, one more. more. Oh, right, quick on the draw. After, after last session, I got all my DAs out. <laughs> <laughs> all right, on, all right, here we go. Hey, right. not bad. That's pretty good. Thirty. That's a thirty. Thirty. Jeez. Um, as you see, this one singular eye start to blink <laughs> very slow, then it opens up once again and oh. stares daggers right at you. No. Almost. Oh. Almost. Uh, Shreya, you're up next. What are you gonna do? Uh, okay. So the, now the gloves are going to come off. Um, <laughs> I would say up top, we're probably just helping usher people at yes. this moment. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right now, we're just Because we don't know what's happening. We're we do not know what's happening. Okay. Right. We got our hands full up here. <laughs> yeah. Um, how high is the ceiling in here? <laughs> 10 feet. It's my favorite D&D question. I will say probably at one at some point Flynn might want to go down and help to find his friend, but we'll see. This how is all goes. happening yeah, so quick, so fast. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah, I don't think I will. we won't even know that um, he's gone for us. Yeah. All right. right. So, so as I unbuckle from that awful damage that I just took, and just I reach my hand in front of the in front of the crystal, and much like I did in the previous encounter with these Nothics, I reach. <laughs> Uh, into the crystal and this time more forcefully just throw out and you can't tell if it's coming from the crystal or just my outstretched hand uh, this flaming sphere and yeah. it, it careens into the space that's occupying that's currently occupied by the Nothic hey, yo. okay nice. yeah. is that going to be a roll for me that is going to be dex, a dex saving throw that is going to be an 11 yeah, yes. that, that does not save. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. And there <laughs> is going to be uh, da, 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 two, two d6. One, two, uh, seven points of fire damage to this guy. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. Um, next up, the Nothic is going to, uh, staring right at you, is going to do two claw attacks. All right. Okay. First one's going to be an eight to hit. That does not hit. And the next one's going to be a seven to hit. Yes. Um, yes. As it swings, you're able to oh. just duck and dodge out of the uh, the area of this claw. Um, next up, the pixie. Okay, so now uh, the pixie is going to, which is kind of insane, uh, going to like put its hands on its head and shake it around and then nod its head uh, toward the Nothic. Uh, and it is going to cast confusion on the Ooh. Nothic. <laughs> All right. Sixties are fun. <laughs> uh, this, this, um, and actually it's going to be a D10 from you, Ethan. Okay. Uh, oh, it's a wisdom save. Yeah. First oh, you got to do the wisdom save. save. Okay. Yeah. It's going to be a six. Yes. Yeah. That does not this is, save. This is really good. Get All right. Confused. So, um, yeah, the 
Yeah, so now you roll a d10, and we'll we'll see. At the start of its <laughs> turn, it's going to... It cannot take reactions. It must roll a d10 at the start of each of its turns to determine its behavior for that turn. Wow. Yeah. Okay, I just yeah. rolled that. But next up in the initiative is Shreya. So what is Shreya going to do? Uh, I am going to move the sphere to continually uh, scorch this guy. Um, but I'm... But I am going. I'm just going to keep it where it is. But I'm also going to bonus action charge up my staff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to bear down the. Sh- I'm going to as it charges up with energy and becomes glowing and magical. I do not like your kind. And I'm going to slam the tip of the crystal down onto the Nothic. Okay. Make an attack roll. Get him, Shrat. Hey, yo. 26 to hit. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah, that for sure hits. For sure. All right. So then that's going to be a... That is going to be... Oh, uh, that's five points of arcane damage to the Nothic. Okay. And uh, it also needs to save against the Flaming Sphere, which is not occupying that. All right. That, that's a nine. And so that's an additional uh, six points of fire damage to the Nothic. All right. Um, okay. Okay. The Nothic is up. I rolled a one on that D10. What does that give me? Uh, you must move in a random direction. Uh, we're going to dis- assign the direction via a D8. That's a seven. Uh, and it must move. It must use all of its movement to move in that direction. Oh, okay. So... What, uh, it's a D8, what's, what's you said? The, what, he rolled a 7. On the I D8. rolled a 7 on a D8. Uh, in terms of its direction, I don't know if it okay. is cardinal. Yes, or... okay, give me one second. I'm 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 actually going to roll this oh, you on my okay. end. Sure. Um, just, I'm going to determine, what did you say? Is it D8? Yes, yeah. a D8. Okay, I'm going to determine different directions. Just because right now I'm determining directions, I don't want your role to oh, sure. yeah, influence that makes sense. which directions I'm putting. Right. Um, okay. So I will, yeah. It's entire movement. Yeah. yeah. And that's a... I think that means you're going to get an off attack, too. I don't think it takes too. any... Uh, yeah, and it doesn't get an action. Yeah. You're going to get to do an opportunity attack, too. Yeah. Okay. This is so, a fun spell. It's great. It's really good. It's really fun. On a really one good. or an eight... It is going to run away from you into the tunnel. On a okay. four, it will um, move directly towards you, and then anything else within that that scope, we will see according to the roll. The D eight you said, right? Mm-hmm. That is an eight. Yeah, get out of here. So it is going to use its full movement Bye. to run completely away from you. Get on it. That is. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> that is oh, going to be ninety feet away Whoa. from you. Whoa! Holy crap. Can you can he do an op attack? He can Bye. do an opportunity yeah. attack. Wow! Try uh, like to yeah, on his way attack? out. I'm just going to swivel the staff around and just yeah. club it in its center uh, as it uh, moves away as fast as it can. Okay, make that attack roll. Does it also take damage from the flame as it moves through it, or is that uh, just I think it's already starting, on. starting, starting the turn. in the turn? It, it already took the damage. Okay. Okay. And eleven does not hit. Eleven does not hit, so I missed. It is just it... blindingly quick as so your fast. staff comes around. It's already gone. Um, as it runs away. Okay, are you or the pixie giving chase now that you have the dwarf laying there right in front of you? Our our intention is to. My intention is to scoop this purse, uh, this being up into my arms and just fly it away from this here. This dwarf. Okay. This dwarf. Um, this, yes, you this, have carried Flynn, but dwarf. dwarves are a little bit heavier than halflings. So, um, as you pick him up and attempt to fly him away, I'm going to have you make a, uh, an athletics check. I'm good at these. Uh, 11. An 11. Okay, you are just able to carry him <clears throat> out of this, this cavern and onto the elevator nice. before <clears throat> you completely collapse. <clears throat> <clears throat> Uh, does this elevator have a switch like maybe the other ones do? It has the exact same mm-hmm. switch, yeah. yeah you, I, I don't even know your name yet. Get up here! Stop lollygagging in that tunnel. And, to the pixie. <laughs> and then the pixie <laughs> comes, uh, comes back up toward the elevator as I, uh, as I, as I whisper to it. And, it, uh, and I 
through my hand, I feed it back into the crystal as it flashes and then goes dim. So cool. Uh, and I yeah, put my arm, so cool. I put my so hand cool. on the uh, dwarf and ju- like throw my hand to flick the switch to get the elevator to move up. Okay, and as the elevator moves back up, um, you can see level by level, um, now everyone is clearing out of the mines. And by the time you reach the top level with this dwarf, um, nearly everyone is out. Just the, the remainder couple of people are just getting off of the elevators, as you can see the rest of your party um, helping those those people get off of the elevators. Do we see Shreya? You do see Shreya coming up with this dwarf now. Shreya! <laughs> and I'm like, by holding myself up very barely with my staff. Kelly, come on, he needs help. Don't worry, don't try. And I'll, I'll help him support this dwarf. There's uh, more of them like, down there. More, I don't know how many more, but more, there's more of them. More dwarves? No, no, no. Although I'm sure there are more of them in places that I... <coughs> no, there's more of those beasts, those the eyeball beasts that, that, that stare into your soul. Oh. There are more of them. I saw another one. It did a number on this one. I point at the dwarf. Um, I'm going to look at this dwarf. How's, how's he looking? Um, at this point, he looks nearly in perfect condition. Nice. <sighs> Seems like you did right by him, Shia. I tried. I'm glad you made it out. Those things I, were not messing around. I can only hope everyone has made it out. I'm going to turn to the to the dwarf. Uh, hey, did you see what attacked you? I just barely saw it. Um, I just saw a massive eyeball um, yeah. before I tried to get away. Yeah, the big monster with the one eyeball? Yeah. Yeah. So it's not the drow, clearly. <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> yeah. As he's like trying to like run back to the the, the rail cart. So uh, when I saw at the beginning of this, when I saw Shreya coming up with the elevator and saw that he was okay uh, and that he was saving someone, um, I'm ushering off a few people as they finish up. I will find the Minotaur as they were, as they were talking and talking to the dwarf and all that. I'd like to find the Minotaur. Okay. Um, yeah, he towering over the rest of the crowd here. You can definitely find Maisie. Um, well, is that everyone? Um, that appears to be everyone. We're getting a head count right now, but I, I believe that's everyone. All right. Um, so, tell me not the drow, right? <laughs> um... Most likely not from okay. the hand that you showed. Yeah. So, um, you, you got that hand yourself. Yeah. Uh, how many were down there? Like six. Six? Um, Isaac, come over here. And you could see, um, a, a human man with this stark black short hair, um, run over and, uh, he, he comes up and he says, yes. He says, um, these, these, uh, these fine fellows here, um, they uh, they took down six. Um, what do you what do you say to that? And Isaac looks at all of you, sort of with a, a little bit of bewilderment, and he says, um, "Well, six. It's not bad. Um, so uh, for six hundred gold a piece, uh, six hundred gold." Sorry, what? <laughs> I'm sorry. You're paying us for killing these? Unless you don't want to get paid. No, I do. But did you know they were down there? Uh, we had some sightings of, uh, uh, a little while ago. So when your people went missing, why did you just assume it was oh, one? No. I'm sorry. Let's just take the man's money. <laughs> well, do we? Uh, I uh, just for the record, um, I uh, there, I found one, another one, and uh, <laughs> I'm, I it looked pretty hurt. Uh, so I all would... right, now let's not push your luck here. <laughs> Six hundred gold. All right, fine. And I look at the dwarf. Say that I killed it. <laughs> make, an intim- I make an intimidation check. <laughs> All right. uh, that's not bad. Um, that's a sixteen. <laughs> he killed it. There was another one down there. He killed it. Yes, he is. I have a witness. <laughs> um, okay, seven hundred gold. Yes. As um, Isaac reaches into this this massive um, bag that he has down at his hip and brings out a little wooden chest um, and hands over 700 gold Whoa. to you guys. Looking at that in the bag of holding? It's, uh, yeah, yeah it's it's right. in a decent sized chest, but you'd be able to fit it. Yeah. yeah but but wait, before you put that away, Flynn, yeah? this is gonna be split. Of course. Yeah, I just, we can't really carry it normally. So. Speak for yourself. I have a backpack. Would you like to carry 700 gold? 
I would like to carry my portion of 700 gold. We can figure this out later. Okay. As I, I said, you all, uh, oh, as I mentioned to uh, this one over here, you all would be paid handsomely for your services here. Services for what? Uh, exactly what you just did. Uh, protection down in the mine uh, to protect my men. Um, they're down there working. And obviously, um, as, as you've seen, some possibly hazardous conditions. As much as I want to mitigate that risk, I would love to hire you all to keep them safe. Oma, why do you look confused? I'm just... I don't understand. What? Well, you're, you're 12, <laughs> so... Keep safe. From the one-eyed monsters? And anything else that's down there. We have come across... Oh, boy. Let me think. The, the creatures with one eye... Um, there was some um, acidic ooze that was down there that uh, actually, unfortunately, melted a man's leg off. These, these giant insectoid creatures that have, have crawled out from under the rocks. Um, my face is just like, my lips are, my mouth is like <laughs> wide open. And I'm just, uh, why do you keep going down there if it's so dangerous? Well, if you look at the amount of people that go down there, the, the risk to reward is actually not that bad. <laughs> Um, I'm just like in horror at this. I just like, uh, we'll talk about it. I share some inc- incredulity. Just the look of incredulity. And uh, we, the civilization that, that you serve is, is in full agreement with <laughs> what is it, the Kaldorian uh, uh, people who rule that nation are of informed of how you conduct your business down there. Yes, we're well funded for it. Oh, really? Well, of course Clearly. you are. And under my real estate. Of course you are. <laughs> uh, it's a kind offer, uh, and I and I very timidly <laughs> make my way forward, kind of like trying to stay kind of in lockstep with my group, so as, <laughs> like literally not to break away in any way, shape, or form. Uh, but our, our services are needed elsewhere. We we stopped by on a, on a special request, and uh, we we'd be remiss not to take care of our other matters before uh, helping you with this. Well, I appreciate you all taking. Uh, Taking the steps that you have, um, you're clearing out your your men from this from this uh, now. How long till you return to your business, or will you hire exterminators first? Or well, um, Isaac is sending down the cold pikes. We we have a group that we have hired um, in cases such as these to go down and make sure that the the mines are once again safe. Uh, they clear out each tunnel and make sure that there's a, a safe environment for our men to go into. Are we in eye shot of the um, uh, the elevator we used to yeah. get to? Uh, well, w- we took that elevator there. Um, we went about 80 meters or so. Um, and uh, and that is where we found them. There, there might be a... <laughs> that w- there should be a sign that we put up. Um to warn of the dangers there and, and uh, I don't know I'd, I'd expect that maybe you're uh, I, don't, I don't know that's, I, that's I where we I appreciate that they usually go tunnel to tunnel right. um, to sense. clear do, out each one do we see these the, the cold pikes looking around you don't no no okay. so you've got a group of, of, um, of monster hunters you could call them that yes called the cold pikes so there's a different group Okay, good to know. Uh, it might just be mercenaries on that. Oh. I don't know. Pretty cool name, though. It is a cool name. Yeah, but we solved the problem. <laughs> I'll say under my breath. We killed a handful. We don't know how many are down there. Yeah, well. This is probably their home that's being dug up. <clears throat> anyway. Well, uh. We'll talk about it and get th- back to you. Thank, thank you kindly. Thank, thank you for the job offer. You are very welcome. Um, actually, before you go, if I could have a word. Yes. Um, I have a I was actually contracted here uh, by one of your workers to look into something okay and I feel like we've completed it uh, based on the gold received and I was hoping to get a now I know that today is not uh, a uh, a um is not reflective of the day to day here and um, as you do an inspection of our, our facilities here, I, I hope that that does not reflect. Um, 
And if I could get the name of the person who contracted an inspection to come by, I would very much appreciate that name, as everything is to code <laughs> and above board. Um, but though I do appreciate you being here, um, I, 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 I'm... You know, I can't seem to remember his name. That's, that's a shame. Yeah, it is. Well, have a good day. Have a good day. Uh, <clears throat> I, I do now sort of break from the line here. There's a... Uh, we attempted to go farther down your mines here, and we were stopped by uh, a curtain of uh, invisible fumes that uh, uh, wounded the lungs of my companions. Uh, I just thought I'd let you know to be mindful of that. If you send men below a certain level to have protection in that regard. I, I appreciate the warning. It's uh, it's not... It's It was... Uh, Possible for me to see it, but not uh, for them. So, very interesting. Make of that what you will. And I, like, I don't make eye contact as I'm saying this. <laughs> like, I just okay. gotta look everywhere but at him. And then I just sort of step back into line like a <laughs> dutiful student. Um, one last thing. We're actually trying to head north. Uh, yes. Any easy way of doing that? Get started. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you just have to take action, Flynn. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> Touche. Let's be on with it. All right. Um on our way north. <laughs> as, as we depart north. <laughs> could I uh stop by the house of Graham? Yeah, for sure. On the way there, I would like to make sure no one's following us or keeping an eye on us. Okay, maybe a perception check. Uh right, that is thirteen. Flynn, why do you why do you keep looking behind us? Well, He's I don't want turning this. around. I don't want this. Father's been through enough. I don't want him getting in trouble with his work because he was the one that wrote the complaint. I'm going to look and see if I see anyone. Make a perception check. <laughs> perception? <laughs> That's an eight. Nice. Neither of you see anybody following okay, you. Okay, good. Yeah, um, I don't see anyone. All right. Well, could you guys just stand out front and just keep an eye out? I'm going to go in and just... Talk to him and tell him everything was taken care of. I don't think he'd be okay. that happy to see us, so that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll wait out here. I'll just walk up a few steps and just knock on the door. All right, the door slowly swings open. Um, does it seem like it's pulled open or just... Just swings open. You can uh, look in and you see in the corner making himself um, a little thing of tea, a uh, large Goliath. Senior, sir. Sir. Hi, uh, yeah, come on in. I'll uh, come in and I'll shut the door. Hi, uh... So, uh, well, I guess I'll just show you. I'll pull the hand out of the bag and put it on. Oh, table. nice. So, this was why the miners were going missing. It wasn't the drow. Shit. Um, all right, I, this is news to me. I need a, I need a moment to, to sort of process. Yeah, yeah. Well, it seems like it's been taken care of for the most part right now, the, the mines are temporarily shut down as I believe they call them the cold pikes are going to go down and clear them, clear the mines out. I, uh, they've, they've been down a few times, um, mostly scares, but apparently yeah. from what you're showing me. Well, if I could, and I'll, I'll sit down and pull out my bestiary mm -hmm. um, and I will relay to him the information that I gained from studying the monsters Okay, and just kind of, you know, um, well, it, the, the scales are the scales or the, the skin is kind of rough, but if you kind of aim at these spots here and don't really look in its eye or try and keep keep it the gaze away from, and I'll just describe like how to better defend themselves, maybe you can use that to keep yourself safe. All right. Um, well, one thing's for sure. I'm going to be uh, taking a father's old hunting knife down from now on. Yeah, I'd say protect yourself when you're down there. For sure. Um, and, you know... Don't be too quick to jump to assumptions. Maybe next time. Right. I know that. I know that maybe drow aren't as common up here. And I'm. I mean, I say that because I care. I travel with one. I mean, sometimes he can be a pain in the ass, but he's all right. Well, I appreciate the warning. Um, yeah. Again, if there's anything I can do for you, if you're around these parts again, yeah, I'd be more than happy. And if there's anything I can do for you, I don't know how, but I feel like 
your son gave the ultimate sacrifice and I feel like that should be repaid. And this is only one step to doing that. I appreciate the sentiment. Well, I'll let you rest and process. Um, and I'll tap on the papers that I wrote down the notes and make sure to go over these. This will keep you safe. Make sure you bring that knife. Um, and then before I go, it's just a formality, but I have the letter. If you could sign it. Oh, uh, yes. Appreciate it. And I'll pull out the contract and... Grabs it, signs it, and gives it back to you. Again, if you need anything. He was one of the best. And I'm sure you went out with a fight. And I'll head out. Okay. <sighs> As I close the door. All right. He seemed shook, but understands that the monsters did it. And seems to be taken care of for now. Good. I'm glad he wasn't insistent that it was something else. Yeah. And that we don't have to go down into the tunnel anymore. Yeah, that place dunk. Hey. <sighs> Tis a shame I would have liked to have spoken to some of the drow. And I'm sure that they'll come. I'm sure you can get another chance. Uh, yeah. I, 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 I hope it's... I hope it remains to be the case that the lives of these men are not threatened by this squabble over territory. Well, when I was listening to the to, to, the, to the big guy talk, he was just saying that uh, that they were trying to negotiate, right? And and that they were nonviolent. So I don't know. It seems like they have more to worry about in that like cavern than anything else. Well, it, uh, it comforts me to know that the leader of these men is a minotaur. That it's not... Uh, I, don't, I don't... He understands what it's like to be outside of the norm. I don't know. What a mess. Perhaps if our travels take us back this way, we could find ourselves a week from now. Uh... Talking to these drow. Oh, maybe. Could be. Uh, all being said and done, uh, we did a good thing here. A lot. We, we may have prevented a, a greater conflict by just identifying a, a more neutral threat. So. And we made a lot of gold. Yeah. Flint, can I have my gold, please? Yeah. Yes, and I'll, I'll pull the bag out and I'll... Uh... Do we want to do this right in the middle of the street? It's a lot of gold to count. We may want to make uh, the most of our time on the road as well and, and get to move on. Okay. Don't but worry. But maybe before we go to sleep. Don't worry. We'll split it up. And you, for sure. All right. So you all are heading off north by foot? Yeah. Does it seem like there's a pathway to walk on? Do just barely at the base of this mountain, as you guys are going to be traveling north from Nestle Valley to the Takir Ruins, you've got the mountain on your left-hand side, this mountain range that goes in north. Um, there is uh, like a little bit of a path just skirting the, the, the bottom of this mountain. Not a well-traveled road, but mm -hmm. definitely something that'll keep you going in the right direction. About what time is it? It is still early morning. You okay. guys got up pretty early to catch this this mm -hmm. um, rail over here. So um, I would say no later than nine o'clock in the morning. Wow. Okay. Yeah, you guys got up right as the sun was rising and, and came over here. Do we want to try and find horses or do we want to... It, it, Nestle Valley isn't so much of a town as it is kind of like a... I don't think there are uh, horses. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's I guess accurate. we just hoof okay. it, just walk. Uh, yeah, I think that's... Yeah. <laughs> not of it, because we don't not have the hooks. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but nice. as you guys uh, start to walk north, um, you all just kind of turn around just at a brief glance to, to look at Nestle Valley once more. Um, as you can see the last of these carts being loaded up and shot back through the mountain, as a single cart makes its way to the end of the mountain, to the entrance as you can see, it opens up as a group of humans and dwarves step out, all of them holding spears. They look to, to be wearing different types of armor and uh, not like a single uniform across them, but swords, shields, and spears as they walk and descend down into the mine. 
So, you guys continue your travel north. Um, it is uh, a beautiful day ahead of you as you have this great view of the mountain up on your left and uh, it comes down into these these sweeping um, valleys and, and, um, and meadows off to your right. You all spend the day traveling and as the sun begins to set off on the horizon marking the end of this day, just off in the distance, you can see the Dakir ruins. You see, nestled up at the base of this mountain, sort of um, uh, making their way from the flat surface all the way up into the curvature of the mountain itself. You can see all these stone buildings. You can see different heights of them, different sizes. Um, You can see that this, at one point, was probably a pretty decent-sized town, um, much larger than Marstock, but definitely not the size of Addersfeld. Um, And as you approach, you can see that the way that this town is laid out, there's sort of a town center. And you can see at this town center, no buildings whatsoever. And right outside of that, that town center, buildings that are mostly demolished, almost all the way demolished. You can see just a couple of pillars here and there. And just a little bit further out, you can see buildings that are a little bit more constructed still. And as it goes out, you can see that the buildings are more and more constructed. They seem to get more and more dilapidated as they get closer to this town center. You can see all of the stone is covered in moss and vines and overgrowth from the years of neglect here. As you all approach, I would like to ask how you are approaching. Just to clarify, uh, so like the outskirts seem like slightly better in a better state as like as we get inward yes it gets worse all that remains are what were once stone buildings like you don't see any wood uh, buildings anything like that it's all made of stone but yes it appears the outer most buildings are more intact mm. while the innermost ones are mostly demolished uh, um, before we approach I would like to uh, touch the crystal on my forehead, and I would like to listen for the whispers of Ilduria in this place. Okay. Make a nature check. Or a religion Oops. check. Oops. Nature or religion, whichever one you want. That's a five. A five? Yeah. You do not. Mm-mm. Okay. Chedo Oculus. And I'd like to use Eyes of the Grave, see if I can get any sense of, get any ghostly... Two questions. Necrotic. How far does that spell extend and how close are you getting to the Dakir ruins? Because as of right now, you guys are still approaching. You're still a couple hundred yards away from the outermost building. Is the sun going down? The sun is, has crested the mountains mm-hmm. um, and yeah, the sun is, has pretty much lowered all the way. So as the grave goes 60 feet, uh, so I guess I would wait to use it until I was within that range. Okay. Um, guys, this is really creepy looking. Should we maybe take our time? <sighs> we uh, we know for a fact that a certain uh, outcast yeah. spent some time here, so let's be careful. Yeah, I gotta get in the zone here. Like, I, I'm still thinking about the mine. I, this is serious. Let's go quietly. Yeah, can we sneak up? For sure. I'm gonna have everyone make a stealth check. Okay. May I contact with the earth? Nice. Natural 20. Yeah. 14. From Natural 20 over here. Oh, my God. We sneaky boy. <laughs> 22. Nice. Oh, boy. Okay. Jeez. You are all silent as the night as you approach. Um, Watch and, out, Red Wolf. And expertly weave your way up towards the outskirts of these buildings. Um, you are helped by the cover of these still mostly constructed buildings um, as you approach. Um, You can see that uh, it is a pretty big town, so at the outskirts, um, if you were looking to cast any spells or anything, they probably wouldn't even reach the town center. Right. Right. Well, but uh, even so, I'd like to use Eyes of the Grave uh, once we get within 60 feet. Okay. Um, you cast Eyes of the Grave. You do not feel any presence of undead around you. Okay. I turn with my eyes still ablaze. Uh, nothing yet. I suppose uh, it doesn't mean anything about 
other creatures, but uh, no one dead. Yeah, what, what are we looking for? <sighs> Do we see evidence of any body? Anybody? Um, people, <laughs> yeah. people, Close. Close. like a recent, check. recent nice. um, action activity. Or an investigation check, either one. Um, investigation or what? Or perception. Um, dirty 20. Okay. Um, looking around, you you don't really see anything. Was that perception or investigation? It was perception. Okay. You don't see too much. And then you just look off to the ground just a couple yards away from you. And you can see a couple sets of footsteps going into the ruins. And then you sort of close your eyes and you quiet yourself. And you can begin to hear a couple of voices coming from the center of town. Okay, I'm gonna like tap Kellek on the, on the arm, or, like very, that. very quickly, shh, and put my finger up to my mouth, shh, shh, and I'm just gonna point to the footprints, and then I'm gonna point to my ear, and have everyone listen quietly. Okay. As you all I listen, you can too. just begin to hear the murmurs of, can't quite tell how many people, but a group, more than one, probably more than two or three. Can we see, like, from the footprints, like, what kind of size of the group we're talking about? Uh, you can see, coming from on, on this path here, um, you can see four distinct sets of footprints. Okay. Um, can we go take a look? Can I climb up onto the roof of the outskirt building to see if I can see the city center from here? Yeah, for sure. It's it's a stone building and it's got a lot of handholds and stuff like okay. that, so it's really easy to get to the top. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to climb up and try to see okay. if I, like, on my belly, I'm going to go across the like, yeah. ceiling or the roof and mm-hmm. see if I can see anything. Okay. As you scoot to the edge of this, the top of this building, you look out towards the city center mm-hmm. and you can see while there are no buildings, um, Lots of trees and vines and overgrowth have completely overtaken that area. You can see that there's a a spot right in the middle um, where there's like a layout. You can see almost like the floor plan of a building there mm. that was once there in stone. And you could see all around it um, a bunch of trees that have cropped up. Some of them sort of like weaving their way into some of these um, mostly destroyed buildings. But in this giant open area where you can see the remnants of this building, you look and you see a couple of pillars that are standing there, just barely sort of standing up under their own weight. You can see a group of people standing in that the, the ruins of this building. Mm-hmm. You can see three of them sort of at the, at the center where there are a couple of statues laid out these these big stone statues as these three figures are moving in between them. You can see a couple of tables with papers and books stacked on top of them. Another four figures are attending each of those tables, flipping through. You can see one figure up by this semicircle of pillars and five full-length mirrors propped up against each of those. Oh. Are they wearing red cloaks? You look over and you see <laughs> you see three of the the figures that are attending the tables wearing red cloaks. You see two of the figures that are in the little circle center wearing red cloaks. And you can see three additional figures. You see one of them attending one of the tables. A half orc with no. Very nicely parted hair. No. Now adorning small little glasses, but a very distinct hole <gasps> in their chest. No. Oh, you can see what? another figure Man. in the center of this this what once was a building. Red skin yep. and horns that curl back to the back of their head. You can see that this figure of what was once Zergath is now deformed as like his shoulder and his left trap are like bulging with muscle that comes down into his shoulder and into his left bicep. You can see another figure 
who has just at this point approached the mirrors that are propped up against the uh, the the pillars. You can see a young half-elven woman with short white hair and a tri-ring tattoo on her forehead. Does she look like somebody I saw in the image? In she looks exactly like the woman no. you saw in your image. In the image from in the from Hayfreed's. Um, Okay. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay, so you count you you listed a lot of how so I see what three, four, five, like like I see like ten total. How many like ish? Yes. So you see the the people who are present there. Yeah. You see five distinctly red wolf cloaks. Yeah. You see the half orc, you see Zergath. And you see this half-elven woman with short hair. Got it. So, like, eight people. Eight people in total. Oh, man. I'm going to, like, crawl back across the roof on my belly. Okay. To look at, <laughs> to look down at my team. And I'm just going to, my eyes are wide. <laughs> wide. And I look over and I, and I put my hands up against my face like claws. And I go... And then I make like a cloak in, um, hand, um, hand motion with my hands from going from like shoulder to over my head to imply like there is hoods. And then I keep going hood and like claws and hood and claws and hood and claws. And I point back to where I'm looking and I put eight fingers up. How well can we pick up what she's laying what? down? Yeah. yeah. Like, well, what are you, what are you gonna give I'm, us? I'm here? very frustrated. I'm um, moving very frantically. I don't know. Too. What would what would you guys be able to take from that? What is she doing? Uh, I think she's making is she casting a spell? Maybe. Maybe. I, yeah. Um, it's hard to say. I see eight. There's eight, eight fingers right there. So that would mean maybe eight people uh, yeah. in town. Okay. Probably seems bad from that. But then she's holding up ten fingers that are. Curled. I think uh, that's we like, I think that's like this, by the way. claws of some kind. What was that? Oh, we're whispering. Yeah, oh. definitely. <laughs> yes. I think that's some kind of okay, like a grappling. Like maybe there's ten. There's there's eight monsters. Uh, or yes, or eight wrestlers. That oh, are, you know, and gripping I, each other. And I continue What's the other to do the, the motion from my shoulders there's to my things. head. They're throwing they're something. Throwing, <laughs> they're throwing. They're throwing. No, that doesn't make any sense. Eight wrestlers throwing... I think if they were doing an action, that would be a longer gesture. There's an easy way to solve this. And I'm just going to start to slowly (laughs) uh, hover my way up toward her very stealthily. Do I need to be stealthy with how I... No, you can use my wings in this. Yeah, for sure. Um, And as I uh, finally reach the the crest of of where I can get in whisper earshot with Homa, what are you doing up here? Uh, I... My hands were doing the hood motion, and I, they as they go forward, I put them on either side of, of Shreya's head, and I bring his head up to mine. <laughs> Everyone's here. Everyone, who's There's everyone? There's from the Red Wolf, including Zergath and the orc with the hole in its tummy, and, oh. and the half elf. They're all here. That's not. That's not good and at I, all. I'm like not letting go of his face. Like I'm just holding it, staring deeply into his eyes. I, uh, uh, the horror of this hits me and I really quickly tense up. I look back down. What do I see looking back down? at <laughs> Just, just expectant <laughs> expressions. Just like, well, I need to tell the others immediately. You should, I would say, rejoin us as well. If he starts making gestures, then, then that <laughs> building is cursed and they're in, in trouble. Cursed but, by the wrestlers. But, but how, can you, how can you not tell what I'm doing? Hood. Oh, I see. We're <laughs> motionally communicate with your limbs. Uh, he's yeah, moving I his see. talons a bit. And she still uh, has the hands on his ears. We should probably quiet like this. Down. Yeah, I understand. And I'm <laughs> kind of imitating what she's... I get it now. Oh, dear. Yeah. Could you fly me down? I don't think I can move. Yes, yes, of course. And I, I easily, right? This is yes, very easily. Easy. Probably as easy as fl- yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and we sort of lower our way down to the to the surface. Uh, I can I don't. I can't even. Summon, once we get to the bottom, I can't even really summon the courage to speak at first. I'm like ashen. My so, whole face is just like I've lost all color. So what? 
What, what is it? Re- wrestlers that are throwing something? Just shaking my head. I am taking Ulma at her word. But I... I think... At the center of this... Oh, Ulma, tell them what you saw. <laughs> Guys, everyone's here. Spit it out, Ulma. What do you mean, everyone? I mean, like... Guys, their red wolf people are here. But also, like... Sargath is here and he looks real bad and and your person with the, the rings on the head is here and and the orc with the belly and I, guys everyone's here. I guess my face goes pale. There's some spooky mirrors and mirrors. Yeah. It would, it, it would appear there's some sort of right or something happening based on what you said their how their bodies were, Oma. Could you tell what they were doing? No, I couldn't tell what they were doing at all. They were all just like moving around on a bunch of papers. But I didn't see your friend from the from the iron light here. Okay, well, maybe we got the jump. Maybe we got here first. Or he's dead. Uh, well, we had the luxury of a, a quick teleport and then yeah. a trip through the mine. Yeah, we... Uh, That's true. Are we going in or are we watching? Mm, I don't want to go in there. I have to admit, I've... Uh, been uh, hopeful that we'd find some answers here, but... Uh, Is there a way for us to get closer and hear them without... You would definitely be able to, like, weave between the buildings and the trees yeah. and stuff. There's definitely okay. a, a path forward there. Okay, and did I identify that path from the ceiling, like, yes. from the roof? So yes. I could I could lead us? Mm-hmm. Definitely. Does city secrets count here? <laughs> it's not really um, city. It's not really city really. secrets. It's it just was, almost it was, saw a city. though. Post yeah. city secrets. <laughs> you saw I don't need to move very fast. That's we want to move fine. slow anyway. Right. Let's do it. Whatever's um, going on, it, we have to stop it. Yeah, we got to at least find yeah. out what they're doing out there. Yeah, but I don't... I mean, you remember what happened last time we fought Zergath and last time we fought that orc? I mean, they're going to just wipe the floor with us. We can't really... I don't really want to fight these people. They were quite a bit stronger than we were the last time, but uh, all, all of them against us, it does sound like bad odds for us, especially that we're down one march. Yeah. Seeing as the stakes are higher than they ever have been for us not to be seen... I uh, bring both of my hands around the crystal and it starts glowing this silvery black and I spread it out across all of us and this veil of darkness uh, falls. Different than Kellogg's darkness, please. Uh, we <laughs> must know that. Uh, but <laughs> as I cast uh, Pass Without Trace. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go! Yes. All right. I didn't okay. know that you took that. Not That's great. Love it. Okay, love with it. this new added bonus, um, and as you guys approach the city center, I'm going to have everyone make a stealth check. Yeah. That's a plus 10, right? Add with 10. a plus 10. Yeah. Let's Add go. 10 your stealth roll. Jesus. Nice. Another natural 20! What? what is that, what is that your, actual what's number? What's your stealth modifier? <laughs> My stealth mod... Man, so yeah, that's two. <laughs> so that's a 32? 32. 32, yeah. 26. And I rolled a 10. Nice. nice. <laughs> uh, 29. 24. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's another <what I'm> <laughs> <Even, laughs> trick! Even more silent than the night, uh, yeah. you guys all approach, and you all see exactly what Oma had seen earlier. Um... But with this ground level view, now you can all see that Zergath, with his now like morphed left arm um, that is just muscle bound now, um, he is holding this giant stone pillar over his uh, over his shoulder as he walks towards this center circle and just it, places it down like it's nothing right in the middle. You can see also what appear to be six boxes just sort of all laid around, all of them with um, sheets over the top of them. So you can't actually see the boxes themselves. But as you all approach, you look towards the mirrors where this half-elven woman, Artemisia, stands. You see, and the images in the mirrors begin to warp and take form into other shapes. You can see that Artemisia bows and addresses all of these these shapes in the five mirrors. She says, My lords, it is an honor to be in your presence and a true privilege to personally oversee the next steps towards our salvation. And she looks over to the right-hand mirror, and she sort of gestures and bows as um, you guys can see that there are a pair of drow twins now occupying that, that mirror. 
you can see the exact same drow twins that you had seen in the vision previously, in black robes, as she addresses them and bows and says, Tahari and Kaiba Shinzo, Imperators of the United Coalition of Kangxi. She moves on to the next mirror, where you can see a humanoid figure, but this humanoid figure's face is strange. It almost looks semi-transparent, as if six or seven different faces were overlaid on top of each other, and with each movement, the faces warp and change, so you can't even distinguish which features are actually their own. She bows to this mirror and says, Kodam Vo of the Strata Pryana. And you can see beyond this figure with the warping faces, you can just barely see another figure standing behind their shoulder. Blue, oily skin, black piercing eyes, and tentacles dropping the front of their face. She moves on to the next mirror, where you see a stark white tiefling with this black hair that completely contrasts her skin. And right behind her, you can see a black dragonborn. She bows and addresses this mirror and says, Ilana Sho and Varys Brog of the Hollow Guard. She moves on to another mirror where you can see a Goliath man with tattoos all over his face and his chest with a massive pelt over his shoulders. And she bows and she says, Newly appointed Turek Stormpelt of the Banuk tribe. And she turns to the center mirror where you can see an old dwarven man, stark white beard, half of his face drooping and rotting. You can see tight black leather clothes and a small black cane. And she says, and of course, my lord Corvin Emberstone of the Order of the Red Wolf. And you can see Corvin sort of steps forward towards the, the edge of this mirror and says, how are things proceeding there? I expect the seeds we've sown haven't been for naught. And Artemisia replies, I am pleased to report that the assembly is proceeding as planned. Thanks to the added efforts of the Imperators at the Tear, we were able to uncover the first key quicker than expected. I predict that we'll have full emergence by dawn. Very well. Then we shall proceed. Good work, Artemisia. Vos Runoth will be pleased. Artemisia sort of bows her head and says, The end is the beginning. And everyone in the mirrors in unison repeats back, the end is the beginning. You can then see each of the figures in the mirrors begin to warp and fade away as each of them, the tiefling and the dragonborn, leave. The drow leave. The humanoid with the changing faces leaves. The goliath leaves, leaving only the mirror with Corvin Amberstone. As Artemisia sort of gives him a nod, indicating that the rest have left, Corvin says... What progress on finding our missing locksmith? Um, no word yet on the locksmith, but we once again located his son in Grafton. I've requested Alana send a team to retrieve him, and I expect this attempt to be of greater success than last time, now that he's in a new land and no longer surrounded by his army. A greater success, you say? It better be. Else you and Alana both shall pay for it. And as Corvin Emberstone warps and his figure leaves the visage of this mirror, that is where we're going to end this session. (laughs) Yep, that's it. We're going to call it right there. So with that, thank you all so much for listening. And we can't wait to see you all again next week. Bye, nerds. Uh, Bye, Bye, nerds. nerds. Bye, nerds. Hi, nerds. No, I'm just kidding. It's me, Russ. Uh, Just wanted to say thank you uh, for listening once again. Uh, Make sure to like, follow, subscribe if you enjoy this, because then it shows us that you enjoy it, and then it makes us happy. Um, Also, if uh, if you're looking for a way to talk to other nerds that uh, love this podcast, uh, there's a Discord, a community Discord that we have. And there's a decent amount of people in there just chatting it up uh, about D&D, about life, about the show. Um, and if you want to be a part of that, it's, it's, it's in the links. So go ahead and click it and check it out. 
Uh, other than that, um, if you're trying to get someone caught up on episodes, we have, uh, I don't know if, if you know, but we have a Harken Back, which is basically a recap of 10 episodes in 30 minutes. And Shane does an amazing job of just narrating it and walking you through the story with examples. And it's, it's, it's a, amazing to listen to. Uh, so definitely use that as a re- reference if you're trying to get someone into the show or if you just want to refresh on what crazy stuff we get into. We get into a lot of crazy stuff. <laughs> Other than that, thank you again for listening and we'll see you in the next one. Bye, nerds. Ba-da-na-na-na. Ba-da-na-na-na.